One of the most useful skills you can have for aluminum TIG welding is the ability to tack weld your parts together without using any filler, so you have a free hand to hold your part while you tack it in place. Now this isn't gonna give you as strong of a tack as you'd have if you added a little bit of filler, but usually it's strong enough for just some basic assembly to hold things in place, and maybe you add some tacks later using some filler metal after your hands freed up. Let me show you the technique that I use. Now the first thing with this is your parts need to fit together really well. You can't have any gaps here or else this isn't gonna work at all. And so what if you do have a little bit of a gap just based on how your parts fit together? Well, you can add a little bit of filler in advance to bridge that gap and close it up and that will let you uh, proceed and tack weld it together. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the welder here and I'll show you what that looks like there in that corner when I add just a few dabs of filler metal to bridge whatever gap you have. Now again, this is only necessary if you have a gap that's unavoidable on one of your parts and you wanna be able to hold it in place to tack weld without filler. So I'm just lighting up there on the corner and adding a few dabs to build it up. This is a good exercise in puddle control. Once I see a small puddle starting to form, I'll add a dab and then stack a couple more and it's a bit of a delicate dance but once you get it right you have a, a, just enough extra material to be able to bridge whatever gap you are dealing with and get on with your project. Now from a settings perspective you're going to need more amperage to be able to bring that together for these 1 8 inch thick plates or 3 millimeter thick plates I would it depends on the joint. You know, if I'm welding a T-joint here, I might be running this at 150, 160 amps on an outside corner, it'd be 110 to 120, uh, depending on how fast I'm traveling. But I'm gonna turn my machine clear up to 170 amps and give myself just a little bit more oomph. Now, with the machine set and I have everything placed so there isn't any gap, I need to pay a lot of attention to my arc length. So I need my tungsten to be down there real close to the material itself uh, to cause everything to bridge together. Otherwise, it's gonna come apart. Now, you may have seen others use a blast or a zap tack and just jam on the pedal real hard and that'll bring things together. And that can work when it does, but when it doesn't, it makes a real mess. And so the way that I do it is I ease on the pedal. So I'll come on it real slow and start an arc and then ease on until I see a small puddle forming on each side together and I can adjust my position and I move to one side and to the other and you can see the puddle shifting to be bigger on one plate and bigger on the other. Once I'm positioned to where those are even, that's when I hit the gas, it quickly bridges together and then I'm done. Here's an example where I'm going to really take my time. And you can see with this low amperage, I can move around quite a bit until I get the position just right. And then I hit the gas and quickly it bridges. This one's a little bit faster. Uh, you, can, you can do this very, very fast once you get used to it. But just having that low amperage time to get yourself centered and see that puddle even on both sides helps out a lot. So practice this, a good way to do that is to set up a joint. It can be any type of joint really works for this, though T-joints on the inside corner here are gonna be a little harder. So I'd save that for later. But on an outside corner or a lap joint like this, you can just go along and tack one after another, after another, after another. Here's what this exercise looks like. I think an outside corner joint is really the best one to start with because the visibility is just really clear and it's, it's easier to do. And then you can move on to some other joint types, but it's a good way to get some rapid fire practice and also a good way to see just how consistent this technique is. It works really well for me pretty much every time. Now, another advantage here is I haven't added additional filler metal that I need to run over when I run my final weld pass. And what this means is whenever you hit a tack, and obviously you wouldn't have this many tacks on an actual project, but uh, you know, just for demonstration purposes, you can see that it comes out really even and any inconsistency from those tacks doesn't show up in the finished weld because you haven't added any additional material. Now, if you're welding different types of joints, you need to anticipate where the heat's gonna be drawn out. For example, on a lap joint like this, 
I need to focus a little bit more attention down on the bottom plate because I know that that's going to be able to draw heat out of both sides instead of just the edge on the top. And that's a real benefit of using this technique because I can watch with that lower amperage till I see the puddles even and then smash it and I'm good. Hope this helps. Thanks a ton for tuning in. If you are just learning welding and fabrication, I have some online courses linked in the description that could help you out a lot. And we'll see you next time.